Father, we thank you so much for allowing us to come to your presence one more time. We are sure that you have something for us. That's why you allowed us to come. We pray that you will open our eyes. Our eyes may behold the wonders and out of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <coughs> Please get, get your friends, get your relatives, get your anyone that you love. We are trying to study, we are not trying to um, just talk. What you are, what you are, what you are, what are going to do now gives you, gives you life for godliness. So please get your friends, get your brethren. And today I want to, I want to see whether I can answer some questions that will help us to um, catch up on what we are doing. I'm talking about the anointing, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And it is very, very, very critical for us to be clear in our hearts what we want. Um, we say from Genesis chapter, the very first chapter of Genesis, where we find the Holy Ghost for the first time, we have been going through. We have not been very, very inclusive. We have tried to give the best so that everybody will understand the Holy Spirit. Uh, this is because we are now in the age of the Holy Spirit and we are entering it more and more and more as we are expecting a revival. If you don't follow us and you don't have a correct attitude about the Holy Spirit, you will be a loser. As well, people who are on the other side, the other side, very few people are on the correct side. People don't believe in the Holy Spirit at all. Even though now I know that many people didn't believe in the Holy Spirit, they now, they now believe. But they are still very timid about the Holy Spirit. Some people like the Pentecostals are too, I don't know what to say. I don't know whether they have the Holy Spirit as, 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 as I'm seeing it. They are too excited. Um, they come to service, they run up and down, they do many things. I don't know whether the Holy Spirit behaves like that. You want to be properly based on the Holy Spirit. If you want to to like, if you want to be used of the, of the Lord, like like we should, so the Holy Spirit is not is not something that you can 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 miss out. You cannot miss out. If you use the Holy Spirit out of your life, you will not live a good life. So please, let us take note of this. Um, I'm going to take some questions tonight that will help us. Um, let me take these questions on the anointing. Is anointing transferable? Is anointing transferable? I don't know how to answer this question, but the first question, the first thing I want to say to you is that anointing is not transferable. It's not transferable. So there's no need of going to somebody and say, I want to use to transfer your anointing upon me. That is that, that, that's not that's that, that's not right. But you can follow somebody. And if you follow him to a large extent, it's anointing can be transferred upon you. Like the prophets, they could transfer the anointing on on a, on, a, on a child of God simply by following. But what I want to say to you is that anointing is not transferable. It's saying that you cannot just follow somebody and, and get the anointing transferred, and transferred to you. Somebody, you want, you want, you want an, an anointing, you must follow somebody. And the only God knows which anointing you will receive. But if you want, in the old sense, a prophet, even today, a, a, a teacher, a prophet, a pastor, can have his anointing transferred to the person who follows him very closely. But that's all I can say about the anointing. But it's not transferable in the sense that I love an anointing, I go and get it from somebody. No. The anointing is not transferable by that. Yeah? Uh, 
If yes, then what need of daily devotion that results to the use to the to the to to, to little to, to the anointing come upon you little little drops? That's in the book of um, Ecclesiastes chapter nine. Let's look at it, and then we can say something on that. Because these are very important questions. Please, don't joke with them. Nowadays, I see a lot of people jumping about and saying they are not, they are not, they are not, but they don't know what the anointing is. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 8. To let your garment be always white, let thy head lack no ointment. So I said in this verse, we saw that you must live a good life if you want the anointing. You can't live a careless life and expect the anointing to come upon you. It's not possible. Let your garment be always white. The garment is new, the, 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 the New Testament garment is a white garment of righteousness, which is issued to you the day you are born again. And that garment, you must keep it white all the time. Let your garment be always white. And we said you must wash it. You must be sure that you don't spatter the dirt on it. The earth is full of puddles. And you cannot walk into a puddle without spattering your dress. So anybody who wants, wants to be clean must gather his dress around him and take short steps. Any step you take, you must make sure that it is a short step. Now you don't get your clothes spattered. That means in your relationships, you must be clean. You don't go to a gossip and stay with a gossip for a long time. You will be, you begin to gossip. And so on and so forth. You don't go to a, 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 a sister who you know is a sister and you're a brother. And you get into a relationship with her and fornicate. And you say, I say, do you know? You have to be careful. But more than that, you have to be reading the word of God every day if you want to remain pure, remain with your, a spotless garment. And as you do that, in fact, if you stay in the word of God, you, you avoid sin. If you don't stay in the word of God, there's no way to avoid sin. So this kind of careless living must stop among Christians. I must, I must, I must, I must, I must do my devotions every day. It's not a matter of sometimes when I have chance or when I when I feel like. You don't, you don't have to feel like. In fact, you don't have to feel like if you want to do your devotion. Sometimes you don't feel like at all. Sometimes you just you just don't feel like. And you say, let me leave it. If you don't, if you don't, if you don't do your quiet time every day, you can never grow. And you can never go to the anointing. You can never keep your, your, your garments white. So you must do your devotions, you must do your Bible reading, you must do your quiet time, you must do every devotion. You must pray daily if you want to grow. And if you are growing, you will know. Because the head, and let the, let the head lack no ointment. Let the head lack no ointment. If you are growing, then your head will not lack ointment. That's what you are saying. Talking about uh, the need of daily devotion that result in little little drops. So if you are if you are doing your devotion daily, at some point in time, your head will begin to collect oil. And if you collect oil, it will go into the anointing. Jesus will, Jesus will ensure that. So, I don't want you to believe in another thing. No child of God is without anointing. If you are, if, if you are baptized in the Holy Ghost and you pursue this thing I'm telling you, so, so, so the Holy Ghost will be spread at birth. It's not the anointing. Let me make it clear. It's not the anointing. You have to receive the anointing after some time living in the Lord. And that is when the, the, the oil up on your head increases to a certain extent. Now, if you don't, if you don't, if you don't have a clean garment, your head will collect dandruff. What is dandruff? 
Your hair will, your hair will not collect oil. So that's something bad. And if you continue to wash your hair because of dandruff, you know the meaning. If you see a lady who is going to the hairdresser and she takes a black hair tie and tie her hair very well, I say, you suspect that there's a problem. Otherwise, when women are going to the hairdresser or they are coming to the hairdresser, they, 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 they want to expose their hair so that you see the sheen. But once you see them tying it, then there's a problem. People go to the hairdresser with their hair tied. They want to go and wash, wash, wash their hair so that the dandruff will go away or they will not develop dandruff. They are not having oil on it. But if you have oil on your hair and you continue to have oil on your hair daily, 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 and there's no other way for the anointing to come upon your life except you have a daily, daily anointing coming upon your life. It's going to increase to the point where it's going to manifest. This man is anointed as a preacher, anointed as a teacher, anointed as, 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 as something in the church. Not only teachers and preachers, they are servants, they are administrators. We are going to come to that in this, in this season. So I want you to know that the anointing is not something that, is, that comes on you carelessly. No, you may not know that the anointing is coming upon you, but you will know it eventually when it comes out. So please, my friends, let us not be foolish. Eh? Daily devotion, daily Bible study, daily whatever, daily prayers. They lead to the anointing. So if you are if you are very, very used to your telephone and your and your and your cell phone and your and your are you always in the in the internet, I don't have time for anything. You can flow from internet to Bible. I don't know how you can do that. Then you are sure that you will never be anointed. I'm not saying that those who watch the internet will never be anointed, but if you spend most of your time on the internet. Uh, really useless, useless news. I don't spend more time on the word of God than forget about the anointing. I hope you are hearing me because this is very critical. This is very crucial. You may be wondering why nowadays there are not many anointed men of God. When I was in school, well, in the in university, students were already anointed. Fellowships, but nowadays you see that there are not many. Why? One of it is the incidence of, 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 the, of, the, of the social media, it is stopping people's time, and they cannot stop themselves from going to the social media. You cannot lock out your, you cannot throw away your telephone for two days. Say, I want to, I want to, I want to study the word of God. That is the bane. When I was young, at university, there was no, there was no. They were not even black and white television. I think they introduced the color television when I was in my final year. In the, in the 70s. That when we began to see. And the, and the, and the program was not 24 hours. Well, about 3 hours every day. And yet, it was different from the olden days. In those days, if you see a cell phone. See somebody with a cell phone. At the airport or somewhere, you cannot see. You don't see a cell phone in the town. There are special people. You don't see a cell phone in the town nowadays. Everybody has a cell phone, whoever you are. And these things are coming in at, the, at these things are beginning to destroy devotions, destroy men and women. Many people cannot forget that. But some people, if you take away the telephone from them, they become mad. I want to warn you. You want to be anointed by God, not Holy Ghost baptism. You can receive Holy Ghost baptism once you are born again. It's only on the day of Pentecost, the day of Pentecost, the one that came on, on, on them for the day of Pentecost that came after some ten days of waiting. Nowadays, it's no longer no, no longer you need to wait. Can, can you be born again today? 
and you can be baptized today, you can, be, and, and you can have the Holy Day baptism today. And they are all critical, they are all important. Please, please, please. So, you can, you can. You can receive Holy Ghost baptism today, today, today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, I want to say to you that you can, you can, but you cannot receive the anointing of the Holy Spirit any day you want. This time comes upon you. After you wait on the Lord, the Lord will trust you. <coughs> he will trust you for the for the anointing. It's a mark of of the of the Lord upon those you can trust. The anointing does not come upon you anyhow. You no, know, when we are young, we are going to church. You have to, you have to be, you have to, in fact, you have to read this Exodus chapter nine and, and throw the verses one by one. Because I remember how we used to count money, usher people, do some things before we began to notice that the anointing was coming upon us a little by little, little by little. Every Saturday we go on evangelism. That's how we are doing the church that time. And little by little, little by little, it came to come upon us. And today is manifest. So I don't want you to joke with this matter. The Lord is not foolish. He knows those whom, who He is looking at. Once you begin to attend to the altar, attend to your devotions, attend to prayer meetings, attend to everything. This is not public, but private. Nobody may know it. The Lord watches over you and He keeps tab with you. If you continue and don't stop, don't let anything dissuade you. Not even that you are doing 100 days fasting. No, that one doesn't help you. If it's 100, 100 days fasting, I don't continue it, I don't, I don't continue in that mood. Finish 100 days fasting, you come back to zero. 200 days fasting, you come back to zero. But sometimes after 100 days fasting, people don't, 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 don't fast again and they don't pray again for some days. They let me rest. That's useless. I, 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 I will encourage you to live a fasted life. You do those marathon, marathon fastings and go back. When you do a marathon fasting, you collect, you collect a Jerichan anointing. Jerichan anointing is not anointing. It, it still finishes with with, with the days. So when, when, when we are having a crusade, they, say, they encourage us to fast. After that fasting, it's called that like you do something very, very much. But after some time, it's like you go back to square one. That's not anointing. So there's, 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 there's a kerosene anointing that behaves like kerosene. I'm not looking for that. You know, something permanent, permanent upon my life. And if that is going to come upon my life, I have to, I have to wait on the Lord every day. If I don't, even if I don't do uh, a hundred, a hundred days fasting, but I, I fast daily. That's the way you live. You fast daily. You fast daily. You don't eat too much. You don't eat more than you need strength for, for, for. Just keep fasting daily. Very soon. The Lord will begin to show you signs that the anointing is going to go upon you. And if you can do in that, you see the anointing. The anointing is not something that is the Lord is hiding from you. No. No. All the young men around me are telling that look, the anointing is for you if you if you care. You don't have to be a preacher. Are you hearing me? There are several gifts, administrative service and they are not inferior to the, to the speaker's anointing. They are not inferior. It's all that have put the speakers above the, those who are serving in the church. They are not inferior. I want to encourage you to settle down. So, if no, what about the issue of Elijah and Elisha? Moses and Joseph. What, what, what do you want to ask about Moses, Elijah and Elisha? 
Elijah followed Elisha. Elisha followed Elijah for 14 years, for 21 years. And the anointing on Elijah came upon Elisha. He was following. He didn't come upon him overnight. He followed him. In those days, we saw that prophets were supposed to raise up prophets. And one person flew down. If I, if, I, if I remember the story of the prophets, which of them became a which of them became a prophet? They didn't become a prophet. They were in Jericho, they were in Jordan, they were in Giga, they were everywhere. They used to dance and 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 and, and, and do several things that prophets did, but they didn't become prophets. But Elijah said, Do you know that the Lord will take away your master from you today? I just said, no, hold your peace. Leave me alone. I'm looking for something. And he followed Elijah to the end. Crossed the river. Saw the man go. His mantle fell. He took the mantle and tore his dress. And when he came to the Jordan, he crossed it. And it became known that Elijah was a prophet after Elijah. I mean, Elijah was a prophet after Elijah. So it's not that they followed them because they wanted to become something. Uh, and, and uh, they flew them, and that is why they became. No, it's not that. They flew them consistently because they were going to follow in their footsteps. You can follow a man like that. That does not mean that um, that um, that 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 if you follow if you follow a man, you can anoint. You can be you can be anointed like king. No, you don't have to be the same anointing. A, a teacher can follow a prophet, an evangelist. It depends on what God has ordained for your life. But in that sense of one to one discipleship, if you follow a prophet, you can become a prophet. But you may not become a prophet, you may become a teacher. That's how God ordained it. So let's all leave that alone for now. Moses and Joseph. Are you trying to say that? That Moses, that Joseph was a prophet of Moses, or, jo or Moses was a prophet of Joseph. Okay, Moses and Joshua. Moses and Joshua. Yes, Elijah. I mean, uh, Joshua was a, a, a Joshua was a disciple of of Moses, but I don't know whether they bore the same anointings, because. Uh, Elijah, uh, Moses' anointing is not so clear. You cannot say Moses was a prophet, Moses was a, a, an apostle, Moses was. But Moses, Moses, Moses bore a comprehensive anointing. But Moses bore an anointing that I don't think anybody in the Old Testament bore. He bore the law. He was, he was a servant of God. That's what the Bible describes him. There has not been a servant of God like him because of what he did. Huh? Eh? He, he, he enunciated the, law, the priest into the, into the priesthood. He so much about the temple. So we don't have a ministry like Moses. Exactly like that. Joshua only took over the mantle from him when he was going. Remember the Lord sent him that and to pray over, over, Joshua, over Joshua and let him get some of the anointing, some of the anointing. So I don't think we can Compare Moses to any other person in the Old Testament. Like then you want to compare Jesus to any other person in the New Testament. No, you cannot compare Jesus. These are people that bought special anointings. But be, so be that as it may, I want to say that if you follow somebody very closely, very closely, Joshua began to follow Jesus, Moses when he was very young. And I know that. When, they, when, when Moses was going, when, 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 when Moses was going to be, uh, Joshua was going to be anointed, you know, you know Moses prayed. Remember Moses prayed. Say, Lord, show us who you're anointing now. Because, I, because he said, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not, I'm, I'm going, I'm going to go away. So please, Moses was a very great servant of God. It was not, it was not, it was not, oh my God, Moses was a great servant of God. He was not, um, trying to bear with the anointing as if to say, him alone can bear it. But one day he told Joshua, I said, I wish that all of God's people were prophets. So, Moses had a special, special ministry. 
in Israel. Not, not a priest, not a prophet. It was all that. Nobody saw God like Moses saw God. Remember the Bible say, nobody saw me like, he said, say, why, why do you, why do you saw Moses? Who sees me face to face? Even prophets don't see me face to face. So Moses had a special ministry in the Old Testament. And I want you to know that. Um, um, differentiate between the Indian Spirit and the Holy Spirit um, baptism. I think that's clear. The indwelling Holy Spirit is what every believer receives when you are born again. The Holy Spirit comes to dwell inside you. But that is not enough. You need a baptism coming upon you and cloaking you. Is that alright? So when you are born again, then you are born again, whether you like it or not, you have the Holy Spirit dwelling in you, inside of you. He leads you, he guides you, he directs you. But you don't have power. Which comes to point when you are baptized the Holy Spirit. I think I can stop here for now. If there are more questions, I will take them in after some time. But you can send in your questions, we will take them. I want that question here on, let me leave it alone. I will take that privately or I will see a way to take that. But for now, I want to pray that, brethren, let us be serious with the Lord. Let us stop this let, 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 let not your sunset be more important to you than the Bible. Let me just say that. Have time for your Bible. Have time for prayer. Let the handset be time for handset. I didn't say you shouldn't use the handset. This, this is a very great warning to many of us. Let us pray. Father, we thank you because we are grateful. Thank you for your counsels. Thank you for making things clear to us. As we live in this life, as we pursue the Holy Spirit, Lord, please baptize us and then anoint us when it is time to anoint us. Do not leave us alone. I'm praying for those who have missed it that they will get back to where they, they missed and recover. That the telephone will not become an instrument that will take us away from you. Lord, help us. We pray that you will help us that we will see the help in the name of Jesus. Amen. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Reshes Media Center, number one, Refuge Close, on Gwambarde, Sabon Tashia Kaduna. Telephone numbers 0814-408-9412, 0805-845-5719. Email address threshesteam at yahoo.com or you could visit our website at www.threshesteam.org.ng.